We'll begin the curl ups now. Ready? Begin. Hey, hey, hey. Come on, let's go. All right, so today we're going to be talking about uh, the principles of exercise. Um, so first off, let's see what the principles of exercise are, and then we'll go through and kind of figure out how we can incorporate the principles of exercise into your daily workout. All right. So here we have the principles of exercise. Um, so first question, why should I use the principles of exercise? Very basic question. I mean, it's out there. Um, maybe you don't know what it is, maybe you do, but normally when you go out and exercise, you want to get some sort of benefit from it. You don't, want, you don't just want to go out and exercise just because everyone says you should exercise, right? We exercise because it's, it's good for, you know, not only our bodies physically, but it can also be good for our bodies um, cognitively as well. So first off, the principles of exercise are a set of rules in fitness that help yourself and your body get the most out of your workouts. So what, is that, what does that mean? So we have, we have specific principles here. Um, the first ones we have are the FIT principle, which is frequency, intensity, time, and type. Next we have a couple other principles, um, overload, progression, specificity, and then also rest and recovery. So here we go, the FIT principle, probably the most common one, probably the most underused principle of exercise is the FIT principle. It's very easy to remember if you can remember FIT, you know, like fitness, F-I-T-T, -T, you can remember, let's see, frequency, intensity, time, and type, All right? So what is that? Frequency. How often do you exercise? How often do you go out on a weekly basis and do whatever kind of exercise you're doing, whether it's cardiovascular endurance, muscular strength, um, some sort of um, stretching routine for flexibility. How often do you do that in a week? Um, next is intensity. How hard do you exercise? All right? How hard are you going to go out and, and run? How hard are you going to go out and lift weights? How, how intense is your workouts? Is it just moderate or is it going to be vigorous and you know, strenuous? Um, next thing is time. How long do you exercise for? Um, are you going to go out and run for 20 minutes? Are you going to go out and run for 30 minutes? Are you going to go lift weights for 20 minutes? Are you going to go lift weights for 30 minutes? Um, so some, something to think about. And then the last one is type. What kind of exercise are you doing? And like I just mentioned, the type can be one of the components of fitness, whether it's are you going to go out and do some running, cardiovascular endurance, or are you going to go out and do some sort of muscular strength or muscular endurance? So what kind of exercise are you going to perform? So real quickly, let's review... Um, Basically, how do we use the FIT principle using the components of fitness? The FIT principle should always be used with conjunction in conjunction with the components of fitness. So real quickly, what are the components of fitness? Let's see if we can remember those. So we have a couple pictures here. Okay, so we have a guy running on a trail. Um, cool. Oh, we have a big, uh, a lot of bicycle riding, very nice. And we have uh, this swimmer here. So this one looks like a lot of like body, total body workouts. Looks like maybe a lot of, you know, lungs need to be used in these situations, swimming, running, riding bikes. So I would say cardiovascular endurance. Great job if you got that at home. Next, okay, we have a guy doing uh, some push-ups. Looks like he's pretty strong. Looks like he's doing a lot of repetition so far. Oh, look, another bicycle rider. Very, a whole body workout. Lots of pedaling, lots of repetitions. Oh, jump ropes. What do I think about jump ropes? Hmm, probably do a lot of repetitions, but then again, let's see. Think about all three of these pictures. What's the resistance? Low resistance, all right? Low resistance. So that makes me think that this would be muscular endurance. Good job, muscular endurance. All right, so that's one of the uh, second components of fitness. Uh, let's go to the third one here. All right, okay, this guy's doing some bicep curls. Looks like those weights are pretty heavy. Oh, he's, this guy's doing a bench press. He's trying to impress his girlfriend off to the side who's not in the picture. Woo! Looks like he's maybe doing uh, 175 pounds there. That's, that's weak sauce. Oh, this guy's doing some leg presses. He's really focused. So what do I notice about all of these? 
very high resistance, maybe low repetitions. So that would make me think muscular strength. All right, good, good. And let's go to the next one here, number four. Oh, this guy's doing some stretching. He's really, really happy. He's like, he's like, look, mom, I'm doing my stretches. We have this girl here who's out on the grass. Nice day doing some stretching. Uh, we have uh, someone here doing some yoga, some downward dogs. So if you think stretching, how do we, why do we stretch? Well, we want to get more flexible. So good. There's the fourth one, flexibility. Now, there is a fifth one. Um, it's called uh, body composition, but we're not going to talk about body composition because body composition is not really a way to exercise. It's kind of what happens to your body if you exercise. When you exercise and you go out and run, you go out and lift weights, your body composition is going to change. So it is a principle or it is a component of fitness, but it's not necessarily something that you go out and do. So real quickly, what does the fit principle look like using the components of fitness? So I have a little chart here. Um, if you look over here to the left, we have all of the different, or on the top bar here, we have all of the different components of fitness. We have cardio rest, uh, cardio respiratory endurance or cardiovascular endurance, muscular strength, muscular endurance, and then we have flexibility. And then on the left-hand column here, we have the entire fit principle, frequency, intensity, time, and type. So you could take this little chart here and just go over, okay, frequency, cardiovascular endurance, you're the first one. I want to do that maybe three to five, three to five three to five times a week. Uh, muscular strength, three times a week. Muscular endurance, three to five times a week. And flexibility, basically just every single warm up and cool down. And then, um, you know, obviously the intensity would be you want to increase your stretches to, um, you want to feel just a, you know, a, a little bit more pull each time you, each time you stretch. All right, then for, for time, 20 minutes or more, and then over time, that time can increase, or how many repetitions are going to increase. So this is just a little chart that kind of shows the different components of fitness and how you can incorporate frequency, intensity, time, and type. All right, so the fit principle is pretty important. It's pretty, I think it's underrated. You can do any workout and just change it by the frequency. You can just change it by the intensity. Maybe you do both. Maybe you change the frequency and the intensity. But if you do that over time, that is how you're going to benefit from your exercise. You can't just do the same thing every single day. Let's say, for example, I'm going to go out and I'm going to run a mile. All right? If I go out and I run a mile every day, that's awesome. That's great. But how am I going to actually improve cardiovascular-wise if I just do the same thing over and over? My body is just going to plateau. I want to keep on going up and up and getting better and better. So I would do that by, let's say, now I'm going to run two miles the next day. Or I'm going to run a mile again, but I'm going to try to come in in under, let's say, six minutes compared to eight minutes. So using frequency, intensity, time, and type can be very, very beneficial to your workouts. All right? So let's move on to a couple, couple of these other ones. All right, here we go. Okay, yeah. So we're using the FIT principle with cardiovascular endurance, muscular endurance, muscular strength, and flexibility. So what are some of the other ones? The first one we have is called specificity. So if you think about specificity, think about maybe specific, all right? The way that you exercise should be specific to what you want to accomplish. So let's say, for example, if I'm going to be training for a marathon, more than likely, the way that I'm going to be getting my best shape and get prepared to run that marathon is what? I'm going to go run. I'm not going to go and lift weights. Maybe I'll do a little bit of you know, muscular endurance type things. But I'm not going to go to the weight room and try to do my, my maximum repetitions everywhere I go. You know, I'm not going to be trying to work on my biceps if I'm going to be training for a marathon. If I'm going to train for a marathon, which is mostly or you know, it's composed of running, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go out and I'm going to run. And I'm going to change my runs by the frequency and intensity and probably more importantly the time each day that I go out and run in order to prepare for that marathon. So here's a little example of a funny video of a guy um, running here. There he is. He's running, he's running, he's got his baton. So this is, uh, let's call him Mr. Pickle. Mr. Pickle, he's going out and he's, uh, he's running, right? He's running because he's training for a big old marathon coming up. So that's what he's doing. He's training for a marathon. He's going to go run. So specificity. Remember, whatever you're going to be planning or preparing to do, whether it's for a sport or if it's just a personal thing, if you want to, maybe, maybe you do want to go out and run a marathon, make sure that what you do is specific to what you're preparing for. 
All right? So the next one here is called overload. Overload is the principle the principle of overload states that a greater than normal stress or load on the body is required for adaptation to take place. So for example, if I'm going to go out and let's say I'm lifting weights, right? Now let's say I'm, I'm doing bench press. Now let's say, for example, I go out and I lift the same amount of weight every single day. I do my same set. Let's say I start with 175 and then maybe I increase it to 185, but then I lower the reps. But I do the same thing day in and day out, and I don't really change it. So over a month or two, my muscles are like, come on, Mr. Severin, you're doing the same thing over and over again, and we're getting bored. And they're saying, and they're screaming deep down inside, they're, they're trying to throw a party, they're trying to say, Mr. Severin, we want you to overload, we want you to overload, make us do something new, do, so, do, do something exciting. So that's kind of what that is. Overload is you need to change your workout. So if I'm doing 175, let's say I'm doing benching 175 pounds, basically what I need to do is in order to overload that muscle, I need to sit there and maybe one day I'm going to do 185 pounds or I'm going to do um, 195 pounds or I'm going to decrease the repetitions. You need to overload that muscle to what it's normally used to. Do more than what your body is used to in order to shock your body. Your body needs to be shocked. It needs to be surprised. So let's watch this little video here. Or a little, oh, this isn't video. This is a little, little chart here. So if you look at the left here, we have performance on the left and we have time on the bottom and then we have a little looks like a little check mark here and this is for adaptation so if you look to the right here this little blurb it's a hard workout briefly depresses your performance but after adaptation you become stronger you come back stronger so many people think that when they go lift weights in the gym that they're actually building that muscle as they're working out and this is not the case what happens is that when you work out you're essentially breaking down your muscles you're actually tearing your muscle fibers and you're breaking them down that's why you know if you feel sore even during that workout or you get sore like two or three days later which is called delayed onset muscle soreness what's happening is that since your muscle fibers were were broken down and basically torn they are now in the process of growing back and it's when they grow back that you get that increased performance so as you can see here our performance is decreased because we are working out and our muscles are getting torn and breaking down all right in this little spot right here all right we're going down we're going down but then over time all right our our body is going to adapt to that and our performance is going to increase because we're allowing our body to come back and get bigger and stronger all right so that adaptation occurs when we overload our body we overload we break down those muscles that haven't really been broken down in a while we let them grow back and we grow back stronger and then thus our performance increases. So overload is, 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 is important to not necessarily add it into every workout, but over time if you think that you're like kind of doing the same thing, then try to think, okay, how can I overload my workout today? All right. So the next one is progression. All right, so progression is pretty self-explanatory. All right, progression is in order to improve strength and endurance, you have to progressively increase the frequency, intensity, and time of your workouts. So, for example, I gave the, um, I used the example earlier of running a mile. If I just go out and run a mile every single day, yes, that is some sort of exercise, but over time my body is going to start to plateau and I'm not going to get any benefit from it. So, how can I increase my, my cardiovascular endurance running that mile by increasing the frequency, intensity, and time of my workouts. So if you look at this little chart here that I came up with, we used, um, let's look at here at the month of January. All right, so we have the month of January, and this is our base workout. All right, so we have muscular strength and endurance over here, and then we also have our cardiovascular endurance. So for our muscular strength and endurance, this is our base. Okay, let's say for bench press, we're gonna, we're gonna do it. Our frequency here is two times a week and our intensity is going to be four sets. So we're, I came up with a little plan here. We're going to do 165 10 times, then we're going to do 175 8 times, 185 pounds 6 times, and then 195 pounds until we can't lift it anymore. All right, so that seems like a pretty good set right there. Leg press, you know, part of the, so some of the things, same things here. Frequency, intensity, three sets. Squats, intensity, three sets. All right, now, if we just did that little workout for the entire month of January, that would probably be okay. Our body would, would be okay with that. But let's say we did the same workout in January as in February, as in March, as in April, and as in May. 
All right, our body would again plateau, it would not be surprised, and it would essentially um, get bored. So what we have to do is we have to increase the frequency, intensity, and basically the time of the workout that we do each month. So as you can see here, the highlighted areas are things that I had changed throughout February, March, April, and May for muscular strength and muscular endurance during the same workout, but I changed the intensity and the frequency. So if you see here in bench press in January, our frequency was two times a week, and our intensity was four sets at, at this amount of weight. If we go over to May, this is different. All right, I changed the frequency to one time a week, and since I changed the frequency lower, we have a lower frequency, I'm going to make sure that I increase my intensity. All right, so the intensity increased to 175 pounds to 12 times versus 165 to 10 times, and then so on and so forth. I increased every single weight, 185 10 times, 195 pounds 8 times, and then 205 pounds to fatigue. So since the month of January, I had really increased the amount of weight I was lifting, but I also increased the amount of repetitions that I was lifting that weight. All right, so that was for... That, that was an example right there of how you can change your frequency and intensity for um, lifting weights. For cardiovascular endurance, for example, here on this, on this first, on our base month here in January, we started out running a mile two times a week and we were wanting to make sure that we came in in under eight minutes. Uh, we have our stationary bike and then we have our stairs, so that's our base. So if we go all the way to the month of May, and we see our highlighted areas, the areas that we changed. Let's compare it. So the mile run, we went from two times a week to one time a week. And our intensity went from below eight minutes to now we want to get below six minutes and 30, six minutes and 30 seconds. All right. So what I did was essentially I decreased the frequency. But since I did that, just like um, bench press, I want to make sure that I increase the intensity. So if we're running a mile in under six minutes and 30, six minutes and 30 seconds, that's going to be a lot more intense than running a mile in under eight minutes because we'll have to push ourselves harder. All right? So that's what progression is. Progression is over a long period of time. Um, and don't get this confused with overload. Overload is more specific to a single day just to kind of shock your body. But progression is more over the long haul. Right? So whatever kind of workout you're doing, you always want to make sure that over time you're changing the frequency, intensity, time, and type so that you're getting better. Right? We want to benefit from our exercise, so always challenge yourself and always try to get better. So that's progression, really important. All right, and the last one, which is very, you know, I think underrated as well, is rest and recovery. So what is rest and recovery? The body needs time to be able to rest and recover in order for adaptation to, to occur. After a workout, your body and muscles need time to recover in order to grow stronger. So like I was saying earlier, you know, your body needs time to rest and recover. If you go out and you lift weights every single day, and then you want to go out and be a weekend warrior, and you're like, you know what, I'm going to get that extra iron in today, I'm going to, I'm going to lift Saturday and Sunday, you're like, I'm going to go straight through, I'm going to go, and then I'm going to go the next week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Wednesday Thursday, Friday, and I'm just going to keep lifting weights, all right? Remember, when you go out and exercise, your body does not increase in performance and strength and muscular endurance and whatever it is during your workout. Remember what I said earlier, when does your body increase in strength and increase in performance? It happens during the resting period. You have to allow your body to rest so that your muscle fibers and your body can recover and grow back stronger. All right, so a lot of people think that they can just keep going and going and going and then this thing called overtraining happens, which is not good and also you know, at, at some point you're not going to be able to get, you're actually going to be decreasing in your performance because your body's going to be so tired and so worn out and it's not being able to grow back, but it's just constantly being worked and it, it needs to take a break, right? So let's watch this well, little I video here. Of bodybuilders train. Hi, I'm Lee Labrada for Labrada Nutrition. And I'm here today to speak with you about overtraining. I'm often asked, Lee, what is the most common mistake that you see bodybuilders make? And I've got to tell you that I have traveled all over the world. I have uh, literally have watched thousands of bodybuilders train. And I can tell you that the biggest mistake, bar none, that they make is overtraining. Let's start by defining what is overtraining. Overtraining is simply doing more in the gym than your body has the ability to recover from outside of the gym and it's outside of the gym that your body grows it's not inside of the gym and the reason that I say that 
is because a lot of times bodybuilders fall into the fallacy of thinking that if three sets is good and makes me grow, then six sets is even better, I'll grow twice as fast. And nothing could be farther from the truth. Doing too much in the gym just basically sets you up for failure. Your goal from the time that you come into the gym until the time you leave is to tire that muscle out as much as possible but in as short a time period as possible. That's why training intensity is important. But a little bit more on that later. Let's talk about some of the symptoms of overtraining so that you'll be able to spot those symptoms and know whether you are overtraining. When a person is overtrained, they are chronically sore. Muscles are aching all the time. Sometimes the joints hurt or you have some kind of an injury that you just kind of nagging and you can't recover from. Also, you're more prone to colds because your immune system is suppressed. And the biggest indicator that you are overtraining is that you are getting weaker or you're just simply not getting stronger. If you're not progressively getting stronger in the gym, whether using more weight or having more reps or whether the muscle's developing, then that's a sure sign that you're doing too much, that you're overtraining. Let me use this example. Let's say that you were cooped up all winter and then you decided to get a tan. Summertime rolls around, you know, everybody's going to the beach and you've decided that you want to get out there as well. On the first day that you go to the beach, obviously you're going to be pretty pale because you've been covered up all winter. Now if you go out there and you fall asleep in the sun, what happens? You get a sunburn, right? Well, it's the same thing with overtraining. Just like you get a sunburn, that that's, uh, skin turns red and it peels, you don't get tan, you basically get knocked back and you have to start all over again. It's the same thing with, over, with overtraining. If you do too much in the gym, then basically it sets you up for failure. You get uh, behind and you don't progress. All right, well, it looks like that guy needs to take some of his own advice. He looked pretty sunburned to me. I don't know. But anyways, he did make a good point about you know, some people think that when they go to the gym that just because doing three sets and a set is, you know, let's say I do 175 pounds 10 times, 185 pounds 8 times, 165 or 195 pounds uh, 6 times. It's, in, it's increasing. It's a set. It's not just one. It's one workout. Some people think that, oh, if four sets is good, then six sets is better. But that's not the case. Your body needs time. Once you've broken down those muscles and you've done a workout for a specific area in your body, you need to give it time to rest you need to give it time to recover, you need to give it time to rebuild and get stronger. So, overtraining can be very dangerous and you know, too much too much of anything can be bad. Can be bad. So just remember that. All right? So, in conclusion here. All right? Do you want to benefit from your exercise? Well, yes, of course we do. That's why we exercise. We don't exercise just for the sake of exercise. Usually we want to get some sort of benefit out of it, whether or not it's just to go out and Release, you know, get stressed or we're stressed down where you just want to get our mind off of something or if we want to increase our bodies um, athletic, athletically or physically. So you want to make sure that we exercise using the components of fitness, which is, again, cardiovascular endurance, muscular strength, muscular endurance, and flexibility. And then we want to use the principles of exercise to vary our workouts, right? So how do we make, how do we benefit from our exercise is using the principles of exercise along with the components of fitness, right? We want to increase the frequency, we want to increase the intensity of our workouts, we want to increase the time of our workouts, and we want to make sure that, the, we, that we vary the type of workouts that we do, right? And then within those workouts, we want to make sure that we're specific to what we're accomplishing. Like I said, if you're going to go run a mile, or if you're going to go out and run a marathon, you probably want to go to do some sort of running to prepare for that. Right? We want to make sure that we overload our workouts, we want to make sure that we shock our bodies and that we surprise it, and you know, give it a give it a surprise party. Uh, next one was uh, progression. We want to make sure that over long periods of time, that we're always changing that frequency, intensity, time, and type, so that our body is keep on keeps on growing and keeps on getting stronger. And the last one is we want to make sure that we allow our bodies to rest and recover. We don't want to overtrain. We want to get better. We want to get stronger. So allow your body the time to rest and recover. So important. All right, and uh, that's all we have for this one, and stay tuned for the next one. We'll begin the curl-ups now. Ready? Begin.